presented by Church Tech U. It's the Pro Presenter Show. On today's show, the props and messages layer in Pro Presenter 7. Hi, and welcome again to the Pro Presenter Show. This is the show where, of course, I teach you all about Pro Presenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. And before we get started, if you've heard of the props and messages layers, or maybe you haven't and you're just curious more about them, why don't you join the over 12,000 people that have already liked, subscribed, etc. And make sure you leave a comment below. I want to be as clear as possible, so if you don't understand something, don't hesitate to ask. So in ProPresenter, um, well, starting with ProPresenter 4, there was a feature added called Props. Now, that was something that a lot of people were really excited about, but others just didn't see use for it. In fact, I talked to someone at um, CFX, uh, the Church Facilities Expo, where I taught, and he's like, you know, I just I don't get what you would do with props whatsoever. So I thought this is a perfect opportunity to for me to re-record my uh, class on props and messages, which I had initially recorded when ProPresenter first came out, and, well, ProPresenter 7, but a couple of things have changed, so I'm going to re-record it so that you can get the update, and we'll talk more about this, these two very flexible layers. So let's head over to my computer, and we'll take a look. So here we are in Pro 7, and um, if you are on a version of ProPresenter 7 before, I think, like 7.5, you'll see icons along the top right here. Afterwards, they were moved down here. So that's where we're going to be spending the bulk of our time uh, down here today. So let's talk about what these two layers are and why you would use them. Basically, props can put anything you can imagine on top of the slides layer, announcements layer, etc. So it's a really versatile layer and anytime people want to do something out of the ordinary, they tend to think, oh, I'll just use a prop. I'm going to agree with uh, my friend Brad Zimmerman, who does the official tutorials here, and say, don't default to props. Ask yourself first if another layer can do that. So, for example, a lot of people will um, want to put in a nameplate for the pastor, and they'll put it on the props layer. That's okay, but a better way to do it is maybe just have a presentation and put it in on the slides layer. Nice and easy. It's right there in the order. You don't have to add an action or a macro or anything like that. It's just ready to go, and you can put it in wherever you want to. So that's one thing. So let's start here. This is the props icon. Notice that it looks like a stack of layers. Here is the clear props icon up here at the top. So we're going to click on the props uh, icon right here, and you'll notice that I have some props down here. Here, let me hide myself just to show you this. So if you want to add a new prop, there is a little plus button right here, upper right-hand corner of this section. So you click plus, and that adds a new prop and makes it so that you could type in a name for it. So let's give it a name. Uh, I'm just going to call it sample prop here. So now if you actually want to uh, put it in, well, if I did that, nothing would happen. And the reason is I haven't put anything on the props layer. Now you can see that right here that is lit. So technically the layer has been added, but it's just not doing anything. So I'm just going to click that to disable that. Uh, first off, let me talk about one of the differences between the props layer and the, um, the slides presentation announcement layer. And that is that, well, the 
slide slash presentation or announcement layers. The difference is I can put in one prop, then another, then another, then another. I can put them on and put them in any order. To clear them all, I can do that, or I could notice this was the last one that I put in, and if I put this, it covers up that. So I've put them in in a different order, and I've gotten different results. Now I can just remove this one by clicking on it as well. So that gives us some flexibility to do some things that you can't do with other layers. So let me go ahead and click that, and since that was the last prop, that is, uh, it went ahead and it disabled the clear button as well. So let's right click on this and select edit and that will take us to the props editor. I could have just as easily gotten up to it from this little ellipsis icon and then props editor, but that's there. Now, if you're familiar with the slides editor, this is basically the same thing. It's a little pared down. There are a few options that aren't available, but let's add a couple of things that perhaps you would want to have show up in your service. So I'm going to click on this and then that's the big plus button and go to media here. And I'm going to do a search for uh, one of my logos here. So CTU logo. And let's see here. Yeah, that's a good one. So I'm going to click here and open it. I actually want this to be lower left-hand corner here, and I want that to be smaller. And so I'm just going to put it in. Um, in television broadcast, putting a logo for the station or whatever uh, on the screen and having that up all the time is called a bug. So I've got a bug here. So now if we go back here to show, and uh, let me make sure, yep, messages, it's all clear. So, um, yep, let me go ahead and put that sample prop in. Okay, it's right there. I'm actually going to show it to you right here. So, let me put in that key and there it is right there. This was a PNG file so it's transparent and now you can uh, you can see it over there. I'm trying to look at myself while I do that. Over there is where it is. So um, I could leave that in no matter what slide that I was on and uh, so and I can use looks to only show that on the live stream if I wanted to. So I could have that up at all times. Now, maybe I want to add another um, prop. So I'm going to click on the plus prop here. Hide myself once again. And let's call this uh, URL. And you might be guessing where I'm going to go with that. And actually, just to show you that getting there is just as easy from up here. Click that, go there, and we're going to go down here to the URL one. And let me click plus and add a text box. And let's go ahead and add the uh, the link that I want tdm.fyi slash pro 7 quick okay if you've seen my tutorials before you you're probably familiar with that particular one and so I can put that right there and now still got this bug in and now I can put in my URL here and 
let's say I only want that up for a short amount of time I can click on that again and take it out and notice this bug has remained up right here so I kind of picture that what you might want is you might want that bug up all the time uh, for your live stream but on occasion you want to add a URL and say hey go here enter in your prayer requests or go here if you want more information about the church or what have you so you could have a prop that uh, you put in and take out from time to time that's the URL and once again is only routed for the live stream so that's a good way to do that now it could be I told you that maybe you want to keep things kind of separate and that is what the other that's one of the things that another layer that we're going to talk about is for so if we click here on this paper airplane messages I kind of imagine that you know nowadays if kids want to pass notes in class they just text each other but you know I'm a Gen Xer so we used to actually pass paper notes to other students in class so the um, this is what I picture this being it's like a note you pass in class but the person's on the other side of the room so you fold it into a paper airplane and send it across uh, the class so that's why the message is a paper airplane so hey there aspiring pro presenter pro are you tired of getting tangled up in tech trouble want to impress your congregation with mind-blowing visuals well look no further introducing pro presenter 7 training at church tech u your secret weapon for unlocking pro presenters full potential join me as i dive into the world of captivating presentation, smooth transitions, and jaw-dropping effects. From beginner basics to advanced tips and tricks, I've got you covered. Don't miss out on this amazing opportunity. Visit churchtechu.com slash free trial for a free month now. Did I mention it's free? And revolutionize your pro presenter game. Your congregation will thank you. There are a couple of things that you can do with this. I default to any time that I want to include a countdown clock uh, using the messages layer. In fact, you can see one that I have down here that I use for my um, my live class that I do for my Church Tech U members every week. So let me click here for show and that just pops in now this is not today's date as you can see it's I'm recording this on Saturday October 28th this was last Tuesday but the advantage of having these on separate layers is that I could route the countdown clock using looks I could route the countdown clock here that's covering me up um, to the um, to both the in-person screens and to the live stream while using looks I only route the bug to the live stream so that gives me an extra layer of flexibility and I can clear that out while leaving the bug in place so that gives me some more flexibility here one thing I do want to mention is the messages layer is different from over here where we have the stage message the stage message is a message that only gets sent to the stage screens if you have a place for it in the stage screen layout that you have showing up right now so that's one difference another difference is I can have if I go here into messages you'll notice that I have various messages ready to go so I've got technical difficulties that I could show right there we're experiencing technical difficulties please stand by 
Um, I don't remember what this one was. Oh, yeah, that's just an example. Um, I could have this, we'll be back in, and that has a break there. That's something that I use when I'm teaching the ProPresenter 7 Accelerator classes, which are three-hour live classes that um, I do from time to time online. So I could do that. Or another cool thing that I could do is, here, let me add another message. Click this for plus, and I could add... Will the following child's parents please come to the children's ministry area? And then I can add a token. Let's call that the name token. These tokens are like variables in math. So I could do that and then I could add little Johnny if um, little Johnny was the one that needed to come. So there, that shows up right there. By the way, I can change how that looks with this theme here. Or let me hide that. I could put in little Johnny's number, AX35N2. I just made that up. I don't think that's anything. And so when I do that, that shows up. Or I have another advantage right here. So if I click Allow Web Notifications, I can click right here, and that is over on another screen. Let me drag that over here real quick. So I've allowed web notifications for a couple of these things. But what I could do is I could share this URL, only I'd probably want to do the IP address 192.168.86, I think, dot whatever it is. Share the IP address, colon, and the port number, then slash HTML, slash pages, slash, slash messages. And anyone that's on this same internal network that knows that uh, URL could type in little Johnny's uh, number. So let's say it's that, and then click send. And the notification showed up on the screen over here. But when that notification shows up, I could click Accept. And it would automatically show up right here. So those are some of the different things that you can do with messages in its layer, noting that you can have multiples of these that you can show up at any time by uh, clicking on them and clicking show. And by the way, you can put in multiple messages at the same time. See, so I can do that if I want to and um, remove them in any order just as I could with props. So that's a very valuable thing as well. That's a very helpful thing that we can do in ProPresenter 7. If you like this content, you'd probably like my ProPresenter 7 Quick Start course. So head on over to 
tdm.fyi slash pro the number seven and quick. Give me your name and email address and I'll make a login for you for free. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchTechU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.